We're continuing to build up the dark layers. Um, I've been working on this horse for several hours now and just slowly building thin layers, letting the layers dry between each layer so that I don't get runs and I get a chance to look at what's developing. Is the color developing properly? Am I getting the right depth? Am I getting the right shading? Sometimes if you just step away from the piece that you're working on for a little while and come back to it, it gives you a completely different perspective. I like to darken the ridges of the muscles and leave the light from between the muscles. It gives the horse a, the appearance of a healthy glow from within. Really cool. So you're getting some nice dark areas here across the top of the hip. I like to darken this, the gaskin and the lower hip area. I like to be a little darker across the top line, staying out again, like I said, of the area where we're going to build the doppling. He's really starting to come in with that rich, dark chocolate look. Getting a little paint spatter, so we got to clean the tip of the needle. remember to work on the entire horse. See this side is so much lighter than the other side. I was concentrating on that side so much and now we've got to come over here and again build the shading. Make sure you bring your shading right up into the mane. Um, after the horse's body color is finished then what I'll do is go back and hand paint the mane completely white and then um, I'll repaint it by uh, using the colors for the flax and chestnut um, like golds and reds and really bring some contrast into this dark color it'll be dramatic and interesting really pretty it's a beautiful color on a real horse it's just incredible one of my favorite colors You can still see how the gold undercoat beneath all these dark colors uh, still shines through. That's why we want to leave that for the dapple area. Here I'm just adding a single layer of burnt sienna to that. Um, I want it to be gold, but I want it to be a reddish gold. So the darker the horse gets, the lighter that looks, and so I have to gradually darken that so that it's comparable to the contrast of the horse. I don't want it to be bright gold and the horse to be black. It doesn't look realistic that way.
Okay, we're going to add the black into this burnt sienna again. The color in the brush is almost completely black now, it looks like. It's um, like a real dark chocolate color. Got a little paint build up on the tip of the needle. It's really important to keep cleaning that off because if you get impatient and keep painting, it's gonna fly off onto your paint job and then you'll have this big nasty sticky chunk of wet paint that you have to try to remove without damaging all of your work underneath of it. Yeah, good luck with that, it's not fun. And yeah, I've done that, of course. It's so easy to get impatient. As you see the color starting to develop, you want to, oh, I want to hurry up and get it done. You know, it's so exciting when you see a color coming together and the horse starts to come to life right before your eyes. Building some facial shading. These liver chestnuts can be so variable too. Um, you know, this color isn't the only shade of liver chestnut. They can be just like a dark golden brown. They can be almost completely black. I mean, I've seen some that are so black you wouldn't really believe that they're chestnut. So this guy's getting some beautiful dark shading. He's still just a little light here, but again, like I said, that's where we're going to put the dappling, so we don't want to kill that. We want to make sure that as you build the patterns of the dapples that there's going to be light shining through. I like to get a little darker over the joints. Follow the muscles. Horses typically are kind of darker over their shoulders. Um, this piece is a mare, but sometimes you'll notice that stallions have like a lot of dark shading over their shoulders and at the base of their neck. Um, some of them can be just incredibly dramatic. So build up some darks here up over the shoulders. This particular piece I've customized into a mare. Um, as per my customer, she had requested that the piece be re-sculpted into a mirror, so this one is a girl. And dark right behind the flank area. And then just softly blend it up across the top line. Again, leaving it open where the dappling is going to go. 
and shading the muscles. Now we're just going to put a couple of drops of the burnt sienna and three good steady drops of black. We'll see what that looks like before we put it on the horse over on the pad. I don't want to go too black just yet. We still need to build up more layers and then she'll have to sit overnight. When she's dry in the morning, I'll spray her with sealer. Um, I don't want to do any dappling until I have sealer on this paint. Um, you want to seal your base colors before you start any detail work. That way, if you make a mistake in the detail work and you have to erase it, you won't lose all the work you've previously done. is just a little bit too dark yet so I'm going to add a few more drops of burnt sienna. Test it on the legs first. I love these highlights that are just showing through this really beautiful, rich, dark, it's almost like a bronze tone. You've got the gold coming up through the middle. Beautiful shading here. I just want to darken this a little bit more for some contrast. Just lovely the way this is coming together. Blend this dark back into where the dappling is going to come up. Bring the dark up from the stomach. and just accentuate these muscles in the front legs and up across the chest area. Beautiful sculpture. Really fun piece to paint.
good to stop and look for a minute. You can always go darker, but once it's dark, it's really hard to go back. Sometimes I've got my nose so close to the piece, I can't see the rest of the horse and realize, wow, this is dark and this area is way too light, so what do we do? Well, try to balance it out. You want dramatic points of interest, but you want the piece to look realistic. You want your eye to follow the piece. You want dark areas, light areas, but there should be a nice flow to your color. I love the way this is dark here and dark here, and then it blends up across the top line. The sprinkling of dapples down across the sides is going to be really beautiful in this piece. Um, we're just about to a place where I want to stop. Um, if I keep going, I may lose too many of my light areas, and I won't have any place left to build the dappling. So I'm really pleased with the way this color looks right now. And I need to just add a few little... See, I'd like it to be just a little bit darker here. But I don't want to go too dark because I do want a little bit of dappling to show through there. So she's now going to have to sit um, all night to let her dry. And then in the morning, I'll spray her with a coat of uh, clear coat. Um, I typically use um, Tester's Dull Coat, but uh, I use that for final finish. For the layer before dappling, I like to use um, Krylon Crystal Clear Flat. Um, I'll put about three coats on, and that'll give me a really good secure canvas to work on to build the dappling. Um, dappling is uh, very intensive, um, and it's easy to make mistakes. Uh, if I have a good coat of Krylon on, I can easily lift off any mistakes or spatters um, with a wet Q-tip and continue to work. And it's just not a problem if you do it like that. Here's how she looks so far. Um, we've got a pretty good handle on that dark liver color. Um, the reference horse is in the background. This is prior to doing any dappling. This is just the airbrush layers at this point. Get a little closer so you can see the shading in her face. You can see where I left highlights in the hind quarters and areas in the legs. Staying light across her back. The gray shading on the muzzle will be one of the last things I do. The extremities I save for last because they tend to get rubbed a lot while you're painting, so those will be the last things I do. Like the hooves, the eyes, all the detailing. Um, the mane and tail, of course, will be done with. Um, I'll paint them white first and then go back in and re repaint them. 
right now we just want to do the body color. Um, at this point she'll sit overnight um, till the paint's good and cured and then in the morning I will put um, several coats of uh, Krylon Crystal Clear Flat. She'll have to sit for at least another day, possibly two, um, before I start doing any doppling. Okay, so stay tuned for liver chestnut part two.